Hi everyone, Alana here from teachtraffic.com and in today's video you're going to learn how to create a Google search campaign the right way without making the classic money wasting mistakes that I see people make. So in this video I'm going to go through seven different mistakes that I see people make and if you make it to the end of this video I'm also going to throw in a bonus mistake as well and you definitely want to stay around to the end because this last uh, mistake that I'm going to reveal is an important one. Okay so here we are in a Google ad account okay and uh, this is just in the main interface and before we get started we're going to need to know where we're going to send the traffic to when we create our search campaign okay so for the purpose of this example i've got this page on my website where um, as i said you know when we create start writing our ads we've got to put in the url so just keep this handy for um for when we get up to that point in this video okay so the first classic mistake that i see people make is they don't set up conversion tracking now if you don't know what conversion tracking is that is your way of telling google what is success to you what's your goal what are you trying to achieve okay so if you're an e-commerce store a conversion would be somebody who ultimately purchases if you are a local business it might be somebody filling in a contact form or picking up the phone and calling you etc so you need to set up conversion tracking really before you start creating any campaigns because once your campaign is up and running you want to see if it's working you want to see if the money you're putting in is resulting in um, leads and sales etc and that's really ultimately how you're going to be managing your campaigns going forward okay so you need to set up conversion tracking and that's the first classic mistake that I'm going to um, talk about if you're not sure if you've got any form of conversion tracking set up, you can easily navigate to that section by going to tools and settings. If you go to measurement or conversions, or you might have a, a diff, bit of a different view to me um, in, in this um, screenshot, but basically you're going to the conversion section and there you will see if maybe somebody else set up conversion tracking for you or if there's any form of conversion tracking there. It's sort of beyond the scope of this video to walk you through how you set up conversion tracking. Maybe that's another video you want me to create and if so you can just let me know in the comments. Um, but really that you need to have that set up. Okay, so that's the first mistake that we're going to go through. All right, now we're going to start creating our search campaign. So I'm going to click on this big blue uh, button with the plus and it's going to ask me do I want to create a new campaign do I want to resume a campaign draft so possibly I got halfway through making creating some campaign somewhere or do I want to load campaign settings from another campaign that I'm running so what we're going to choose here is plus new campaign okay so I click this and um, it's going to ask me what goal I would like to choose now I'm going to suggest that you choose create a goal create a campaign without a goal guidance and this is because um, you want all the available settings available to you okay so I'm going to click this one and then I'm going to click the search network these are obviously all the other types of campaign types that you can create but for this video I'm showing you as I said how to create a search campaign so we click search uh, don't worry about this and we click continue so I want to start a new one that's fine Okay, I'm going to give it a name. That's uh, what we're going to be creating a campaign about. Okay, now this is here is classic mistake number two, where the default setting here, so Google's being really, really sneaky. The default setting here is to have the search network and include search partners and also include the Google display network. This is very, very sneaky by Google. You definitely do not want the Google Display Network. You'll get thousands of impressions and a low click through rate. Now, don't get me wrong, I actually quite like advertising on the Display Network, but I never ever mix a search campaign with a display campaign. Okay, so what we're going to go do is we're going to deselect this. Okay, you may want to deselect Google Search Partners as well. And if you go here, I'll sort of give you a bit of more information about um, the search partner networks. There's still intent there, so I sometimes don't mind running uh, search partners, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to deselect this as well. Okay, 
Um, so yeah, so that is mistake number two. Okay, let's scroll down. I'm going to show more settings here. Okay, and start an end date. That's fine. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. So this is classic mistake number three. For many types of local businesses, you probably do want an ad schedule or schedule, depends on how you pronounce it. And really that's going to turn your ads on and off for certain types of the day. So if you have a local type business, let's say a dental practice or a legal practice or whatever, right? You are only in your office between really nine and five, Monday to Friday. Okay. You don't want your ads to show all day at all hours. Okay. So here is when you can select when you want your ads to turn on and off based on the day of the week and the hour of the day. Okay, so you can easily add in, let's say, Mondays to Fridays, if that's what you want. And we can say, um, let's say, maybe 9 a.m. to, and we can just make it 5 p.m. and just be really classic. Okay, but obviously you would choose uh, an ad schedule that you want. Or perhaps if you are, you know, selling, let's say, an online course, you don't need to have that because you don't mind advertising through all weird hours of the day. Okay. So for the purpose of what I'm going to be advertising, which is an online um, course, I'm actually going to remove this, but for really, for most types of businesses, you're going to be wanting some kind of ad schedule. Okay. So yeah, that's basically what you do here. So that is classic mistake number three. All right. Classic mistake number four is People don't put in their location targeting. Once again, really, really appropriate for especially local businesses. But really, even for any type of local business, no, sorry, any type of business, I would include some form of location targeting. So even if, let's say, in the case of this, where I'm promoting uh, a, a, an online course, I would create different campaigns for different countries, actually. So you definitely want to apply some form of location targeting. Um, so you, the default here, which is the classic mistake, is all countries and territories. And because I'm located in Australia, <laughs> that's here. And you can enter in another location here. So let's say I want United States. And I can choose target to exclude, uh, to, to include that country. You can also exclude countries. Okay, so if you make want to make sure that you don't advertise in certain places, you can also exclude countries. If we go to location options here, this is another little sneaky setting, which is part of my location targeting example. The default setting here is for people in regularly or who've shown interest in your target locations. So this default setting means that my ad would show um, for somebody who has shown interest in America. So let's say somebody who's in Europe and has shown interest in things in America, then my ad will show. So it's a pretty sneaky setting by Google. So if you really, really want the most, uh, loca I guess, tight location targeting, so you only want the people in that area, then the one that you want to choose is this middle one, people in or regularly in your target locations. Okay. And you can, um, yeah, so if you don't want to, let's say, target a whole country, perhaps you're a local business and you just want to target people in your area, we can take it a bit more granular and go to advanced search here. And here we can do what's called radius targeting. So let's say um, I'm in a suburb in, oh, I'm located in Sydney, but we'll just do Bondi, okay? And so Bondi Beach, we can target what's a 20 mile radius here. So if I do target that, you'll see it's done a 20 mile radius there. So you can do uh, radius targeting just that easily really or if you want to change the 20 mile radius to kilometers that we can just do kilometers that's we can make it five kilometers we type in bondi again and we target and you can see it's a much smaller circle that's gone around that way okay so depending on what type of business you have and where you want to advertise and what's appropriate for you uh, that's the way you might sort of refine it even more because if you're let's say a dental practice in bondi here you don't want to advertise all of Australia because somebody, you know, you get the idea. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Just cancel that. Cool. And you can also take the extra layer of insurance and also exclude a country as well, if you like. So let's pretend we want to uh, exclude Australia <laughs> for fun. Uh, Australia, and we can also exclude it this way. 
And this way we can, you know, you might want to uh, add an extra layer of security that way. I'm going to remove that because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that is the classic mistake. Number four is not getting the right location targeting set up. Okay, scrolling down here, uh, English, that's fine. I'm not going to add an audience because I want it to be cold traffic. That's fine. And the budget, I'm going to set a budget. I'll let's say just choose five dollars for now just because this is just an example okay and so this here is classic mistake number five which is the another sneaky default setting by google is to um, use maximize conversions here as your bid strategy okay so starting out with a brand new search campaign with a pretty new account definitely recommend not doing this bid strategy i'm going to suggest that you select this um this link here and what you do want is you want manual cost per click bidding okay so all these what's called automated bid strategies here target CPA target ROAS etc are uh, good you basically are hand overing handing over rather the bid the bidding system to Google okay so whilst I am actually a fan of doing these automated bid strategies they're a bit of an advanced technique and once your uh, account has a number of conversions under their belt and it's got a bit of data and Google knows uh, how to optimize your account because it's actually got some data, then by all means you can do these automated bid strategies. But starting out, you definitely want to do manual CPC. And this other sneaky setting is to help increase conversions with enhanced CPC. So this is basically saying Google saying, um, do we have permission to bid a little bit more where we think we can get a conversion? So starting out, I'm going to ask you to deselect that as well because we're going to be pretty strict with Google with our maximum cost per click. Okay, so that there is sneaky setting or classic mistake number five. Okay. All right, so this is where we're going to create an ad group and I'm going to just call it uh, Google. The default bid, we can just make it, let's say 50 cents. We can always change this later on. And here is where we're going to start putting in some keywords. And this is where it's going to be our sixth classic mistake that people make, whereby they don't create keyword themed ad groups what they do is they create one campaign like we've done they've got one ad group which we're doing now and then they put all their keywords in this one ad group and all their keywords are somewhat related to each other but largely unrelated to each other and it's a classic mistake so you want to make what's called keyword themed ad groups so you could kind of go the extreme method and create one keyword per ad group I personally am a fan of very, very tightly themed keywords. So for the purpose of this, we're going to put the keywords in here. And um, for, uh, so, for example, we're going to say, um, I'm going to do phrase match and say uh, create Google, oopsie, Google retargeting. Okay. And this is with the inverted commas saying to Google that these words need to be present in this order in order for my ad to show. So the classic mistake as well is for people to not put any syntax or sort of, uh, as you can see down here, keyword. If you put a keyword without any syntax, it's what's called broad match, in which case your ad might show for really lots of unrelated terms. Uh, inverted commas is phrase match. And if you put square brackets around the keyword, that's exact match, okay? Talking about match types is probably a video in itself as well, so I can go into more depth in that. Uh, but for now, just know I'd say just use phrase match because um, the one that the match type that is my preference, there Google have announced uh, at the time of this recording about a month ago that they're retiring it. Okay, so we're going to put in variations of this. on Google and you see these keywords are very related to each other yes there's slight variations uh, but it's all about Google remarketing or retargeting on Google or retarget on Google exactly okay so with this match type it will allow for additional terms before and after it so I, I don't have to think of every possible combination of it I can be a bit flexible with that 
Okay, so that there is classic mistake number six is to throw in um, really, you know, the mistake is to throw in all these unrelated keywords. So I'm not going to do that. But what I would do here is I would create another ad group here and then I can let's do, let's say, um, create Facebook retargeting and I can create a Facebook centric ad group. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't want to confuse people. <laughs> so let's just bin that. Cool. Alrighty. So let's save and continue. And now this comes to the fun part of me writing an ad. And this is where we're going to need our final URL. Remember at the start of the video, I said you're going to need this handy. So I'm going to go here and I'm just going to grab this URL, final URL, because that's where I want to send the traffic to. And as you can see here, it's changed my display path to be teachtraffic.com. And here I can put in pretty much whatever words I want. This, that URL doesn't have to exist, but it's going to be 15 char characters long. So I can say, um, let's do it in lowercase, retargeting. And I can say, um, I'll just leave it like that, retargeting. I'll say challenge because it's a retargeting. It's a 14-day retargeting challenge. Okay. Even though this URL, teachtraffic.com slash retargeting slash challenge, does not exist. It's just a way of injecting more keywords into uh, my ad because you can see here, that's what it's going to look like in the preview. Okay, so don't worry if whatever you put here is not a live URL on your website. It's just a nice little opportunity to get some more keywords in there. Okay, so here I'm going to start putting some headlines. So this, the new default is to have a what's called a responsive search ad. And that is where you can put up to 15 different headlines of which Google is going to choose only three different headlines. And you can put as many up to 15 as you like. Okay. So, and you can also do what's called pinning a headline as well. All right. So I'm just going to uh, put in some headlines here. Okay. So <laughs> Google have also tried to help me here a little bit. So on they've, based on my website and existing ads. So we can say join the 14 day challenge now. And as you can see here, it's put it here. And I can pin, say I want to pin this, which means it will only show in position one. And therefore this headline will always show in position one and then headline two and three, perhaps uh, they, it will rotate through different options. Okay, so I can say considering I've, um, the keywords I've chosen are create Google retargeting. So I'll say um, create Google retargeting oh, ads. This may get disapproved because Google's a trademark term, but I may, it may slip under the radar. We can try it. Um, we can say online video tutorials. Uh, and as you can see here, I've, I've used up 22 of the 30 available characters. Obviously, as I said, if you exhausted all the all the options here and you want to add more, you just keep adding headlines here. And as I said, you can add up to 15. Okay. And I've pinned this one here. If you want to unpin, you just click this and you just put it there. Okay. And then we can write our description as well, uh, which allows us up to 90 characters. Okay. So I'm going to say... And here you can see I've just put in an ad. If you want more descriptions as well, you can choose add a description and Google will then choose two of these four that you've loaded in. And you can choose to pin one of these, much like we've done with the headlines, uh, but you don't have to. They will show two descriptions. Um, and if you put in the four, they will oscillate and change between um, which two they, you know, they choose. Okay, and then we click done. And we click 
uh, save and continue. Now, classic mistake number seven is that people only put in one ad. So please add in another ad variation um, as you know, you will find actually that the performance of different ads work differently. So I wouldn't rely on the responsive search ads to uh, mean that you don't have another ad as a split test because they're going to be going through the headlines. Because what I find happens is once they find a winning combination, they kind of just stick to it. Okay, so I like to create another variation ad here with completely different uh, headlines, etc., and and split test that way as well. Okay, so that I'm not going to do it now because I've just gone through the process. But um, please add in at least two different ads uh, to split test. Okay, so I'm going to click save and continue, and then we're done creating our ad. And um, yeah, don't worry about this. It's saying that um, no traffic expected. I'm just going to publish it anyway. Publish. They're just trying to get me to expand and choose more keywords. And as promised, the uh, the bonus um, mistake I want to talk to you about and to show you is if I go to it here. One second. Uh, this is the campaign that I just created. Is to add in what's called negative keywords okay negative keywords will tell Google when somebody types this particular word in I do not want my ad to show okay so you definitely definitely want to add negative keywords because they're gonna save you wasting money on ads that aren't right so for example what would be a classic negative keyword um, would be free right somebody who wants uh, something some free information because I'm selling this information okay free um, another one would be um, you know what you know what is retargeting I don't really want I want somebody who knows what retargeting is I just want to learn how to do it uh, definition would be somebody who's just in sort of in research mode for example you get the idea okay so um, maybe you want to add in competitors for example you know PDF potentially so whatever it is that you uh, is a word or phrase that you know that you don't want uh, that's going to prevent your ad from showing so that you don't waste money on the wrong kind of traffic okay and so so often I see this happen that people have no negative keywords I'm actually a big fan of using what's called negative keyword lists which is one central location to look after your negative keywords that you can then apply to multiple campaigns okay so you click save and then we've got our negative keywords here. We've got our search keywords here that we put in here. If we want to add in some more keywords, we can just easily go here. And this is going to give us um, some uh, ad additional ideas. So if I do this, make sure that you then put in the match type information so that it's not broad match. And we can see we've got that one there as well. Um, so there you have it. And then here is our ad what I add here but please you would have at least two and there you have it so that's how easy it is to create a Google search campaign uh, the right way thanks Ilana for this practical walkthrough if you found this video helpful Ilana has more videos all about PPC over on her YouTube channel for example write this one on targeting basics for YouTube ads so check that out as well now from everyone at measure school happy measuring until next time